Next thing I'm going to talk about is the adrenals. And uh, I think I'm going to start on the adrenals by talking about commonly what happens in America, the whole blood sugar roller coaster. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it. I don't know if you know exactly what's happening inside the body that causes that to happen, but I'm going to explain it to you real quick. Basically what happens is we consume something because we need energy, right? So we consume a Starbucks coffee or a donut or a candy bar, a Snickers, you know, all, all these things that are advertised that are kind of quick pick-me-ups because they contain all this sugar. So what happens is as soon as that sugar enters the bloodstream and there's an abnormal amount of sugar in the bloodstream, the body has to produce insulin, right? Insulin to manage that blood sugar and to get it into the cells and to turn it into energy that the body can use. And very simply what happens is whatever the body can't use it, it turns it into fat and it stores. So that's one of the, the problems with consuming too much sugar right there. But what happens is all this insulin is in the blood. As soon as the insulin is in the blood, it tells the body that it doesn't need sugar anymore to, to, to decrease the sugar levels. So the insulin levels increase and the sugar levels drop. Okay, when the sugar levels drop too low, it's the job of the adrenal glands to, re to uh, release cortisol, which actually turns fat into glucose, into sugar. So in other words, it's the job of the adrenal glands to produce sugar for the body when you need it. Okay, when you need, when you need a boost, when you need a lift. Okay, it also produces hormones that do that too, like adrenaline, right? I mean, adrenaline's powerful stuff. You can lift a car off a dying person if you have enough adrenaline. I mean, it's powerful, powerful stuff. So the adrenal glands are very important. No athlete would be a good athlete without properly functioning adrenal glands. So this roller coaster keeps happening where the insulin's high because of the sugar, then the blood sugars drop, and then the adrenal glands has to produce cortisol. And what happens is this continually happens is the adrenal glands get exhausted. It's just constant, constant barrage on the adrenal glands having to do all this work. And when they get exhausted, what happens? They can't function anymore. They can't do what they're supposed to do anymore. And when they can't do what they're supposed to do anymore, your body's not going to get energy naturally. Your adrenal glands aren't going to do what they're supposed to do. So how do you get energy? Well, you have to eat another Snickers bar or a monster drink or a Red Bull or something because your adrenal glands aren't functioning. They can't do it for you. So you have to get that artificial stimulation from something. And it's a hard habit to break. It's a hard roller coaster to break. And believe me, the companies like Red Bull and Monster don't want you to break that cycle. I mean, you know, you spend a lot of money on that stuff. Uh, you guys seen the warning label on Red Bull? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, there, there's a warning on Red Bull that says it can increase your risk for heart attack and stroke. Um, so many people got heart attacks and stroke in Germany that they actually filed a lawsuit against the company. And I don't know if they ended up making it illegal, but they're trying to make it illegal in Germany to sell Red Bull because so many people are getting heart attacks and stroke just from drinking Red Bull. So it's dangerous, very dangerous. So that's kind of the roller coaster that happens. Um, and it just wears you down. It just wears down the body and just makes you exhausted. So. The key to energy, going back to the, the point here, the key to energy is not having to stimulate your body with artificial, quick fixes, short-term solutions, but get your body and your glands operating the way they were designed to operate so that you have energy levels throughout the day. You have steady energy throughout the levels throughout the day, and then when you need more energy, if you're playing a sport, if you're going to a party, something where you need a pick-me-up, your body can do what it needs to do. And you don't go and you'll be like, oh, I'm exhausted, I'll go anyway, and you're just like a total bum. Because you, your body can't produce any energy. And that's what happens. So, any questions on that? Yeah? With Red Bull, is it because it has so much sugar and caffeine mixed? that it's causing a heart attack, I was just curious. Yeah, I mean, either sugar or caffeine, either one can do it both, but the Red Bull specifically is the caffeine. That high caffeine can cause the heart to race, and yeah. Because I noticed when I, I get, got some of it for free, 
uh -huh. and I was doing one a day, and uh, I did it for about five days straight, and I just noticed how, like you're so right, that I, after I did drink, I would just crash. I would get tired right. in yeah. a couple hours, and then yeah. just sleep. So I finally, I was like, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, some people learn from experience, but yeah. some people, instead of, you know, coming off it, they just, they rely on it. Uh, and then the other very important organ is the liver. Uh, the liver converts thyroid hormone. We talked about how important the thyroid is. Uh, a lot of people aren't producing T4 or their liver's not functioning properly, so it's not converting T4 into T3. If anybody's had thyroid problems, you know what I'm talking about probably. Um, so they'll give you Synthroid or some kind of a, a thyroid medication. Uh, instead of healing your thyroid and liver, they just give you a medication to compensate for that. Uh, but all that does is that cause your glands to atrophy and weaken over time because you're not restoring the natural function of the body. Uh, but the liver is responsible actually for the conversion of the, those thyroid hormones. Uh, it also regulates your temperature, your metabolism, um, and it regulates your blood sugar. Most of the protein you eat actually goes to the liver. It's converted into glucose to be used as energy for the body. And again, whatever is in excess that the body can't utilize, it's just going to turn into fat and store it. So that's all it can do. So, and uh, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention too about sugar and blood sugars and the adrenals is, uh, I think one thing that that we know now as a fact that um, we don't realize is how how much of a tie there is between our blood sugar levels and our mood. I don't know if anybody's experienced that. But, you know, there's a direct correlation to your mood and your feelings and your emotions, uh, especially if people are, are, you know, they eat a lot of sugar. Uh, they'll really have a lot of swings and ups and downs in their, in their moods and the way they feel. So it's important to take note of that. Um, again, the goal is always to establish balance, a healthy, harmonious, balanced body. So reasons for poor energy levels. And I'll give you an example. Just thinking back when, when I used to work corporate, you know, I, I, some of you might have heard the story. I mean, I was 170 pounds out of college, and then I don't remember if it was after one year or two years, but within a couple of years of working corporate, I was 220 pounds. So I gained about 50 pounds in less than two years. And I was pretty active. <laughs> I played volleyball and tennis, and I'm like, man, how did this happen? Um, but you know, just corporate lifestyle, sitting behind a desk. Uh, I think about, and I, I didn't even realize the connection, it seems so stupid now, but I would go to lunch, you know, every day, wherever, wherever was close by, you know, the peanut, and we'd go get wings, or we'd, whatever, and I was always exhausted in the middle of the day, every day, and I never made a connection that it had to do with what I was eating for lunch, <laughs> but every day I was tired, and I just thought, I guess that was life, I don't know, and I think a lot of people are kind of stuck in that rut. <laughs> You know, where they're just like, oh, I just get tired in the middle of the day. It is what it is, you know. But it totally has to do with what you eat, you know. Again, just like we were talking about how this whole roller coaster works. You know, if you eat a high, simple carb meal, breads and pastas, and people eat those heavy foods over lunch, and it spikes that blood sugar, and then it crashes. That's, that's the rest of your day. And that's going to be the rest of your day forever, unless you fix it, so... Yeah, I, I definitely learned my lesson on that one. So reasons for poor energy levels, stress, lack of sleep is a big one. Um, you cannot have energy and you cannot uh, function properly if you don't get adequate sleep. Uh, the sleep is when the body heals and repairs and does what it needs to do to rejuvenate you. So you need to be sleeping. <coughs> eight, I'm a fan of eight hours a day. And believe it or not, I mean, I know people that function on four hours a day and they're fine and they have plenty of energy, and that's fine. I mean, if that works for them, that works for them. It does not work for me. If I don't get eight hours of sleep, I feel the difference. I mean, seriously, even if I get seven hours of sleep, I don't feel the same. I think eight hours of sleep is very important. Uh, adrenal exhaustion, as we talked about already, and, um, you know, some people have adrenal exhaustion severe adrenal exhaustion. If anybody's heard of like Addison's disease or anything like that where it's complete and total adrenal burnout. And 
you literally just, sometimes they diagnose it as chronic fatigue syndrome. You basically just have nothing in the tank, nothing in the tank, and you have no idea what to do or where to turn, and you're just lost. And it can just be severe adrenal burnout. 